Another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the Razer Book, not Blade, Book 13, which is a new lineup of laptops, or the beginning of a new lineup of laptops for Razer, the gaming company. And this lineup is more like, sort of creator focused, but more like productivity office focused. And so let's uh, test it out throughout today and kind of see how it does. But first things first. <laughs> So much. You too. Coffee. Check. Sitting outside at a cafe with my friend Olivia. We're both trying to, you know, work from a cafe while we still can, and the weather is oddly nice today. And we're gonna have less and less of these days as we get closer to winter. But real quick, let's talk a little bit about the laptop. All right, so this is a new product line for Razer, and it's similar to like their stealth lineup in a way, but they actually dropped the GPU performance in favor of battery life and size, basically. We'll talk more about the GPU in a sec when we get back to the studio. The lineup, though, is supposedly aimed more at productivity and like maybe creatives. Regardless, I like the concept for Razer because truthfully, at the end of the day, it's hard to find a Windows PC that uses premium materials and feels as solid as like a Razer Blade does. Now I find myself looking at other laptops that have maybe higher specs or slightly more features, but for some reason, they're all still made out of like cheap cases. And while there's nothing wrong with that, I mean, it keeps the cost down if you just want power and that's that, I personally want something that feels and looks as good as it performs. Size-wise, this is also smaller than even the Razer Blade Stealth by about 10% volume-wise. Measuring it, I'm getting about a quarter of an inch in length and width less with the same thickness. Now, we have much smaller bezels around the tops and bottoms of the screen, along with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio instead of a 16 by 9. Now, that screen comes in an wow. FHD Plus without a touchscreen but has a matte display and an FHD Plus Touch and QHD Plus Touch options with Gorilla Glass 6 and an anti-reflective coating that works well enough on this QHD Plus model that I have here, and they all weigh about three pounds. And frankly, like I mentioned, it just looks good and feels solid. All right, I've been sitting in the coffee shop for about an hour, just using the web browser, you know, simulating normal work. Uh, the battery mode has been on better battery and the brightness has been on 50% brightness. Now, again, this is pre-release software, so keep that in mind. But right now the battery's at 89%. Now this laptop is aimed at creatives a bit at least. And as I mentioned, has a decent amount of CPU power thanks to that latest 11th gen i7 in here, along with 16 gigs of non-upgradable RAM. But the interesting thing here is that we have Intel's new answer to all the discrete mobile GPUs you would normally find in a laptop like this called the Intel Iris XE, which looking online and even talking to other people in the industry, there simply isn't a lot of info on it, weirdly enough. Now, unfortunately, like I said, this is a pre-production model and I can't benchmark it. But as more laptops are coming out with this GPU in it, you'll be able to check online for benchmarks to get a better idea of where in the totem pole of GPUs this guy maybe sits pretty soon. Now, in the meantime, I did edit some photos in Lightroom and Photoshop and kind of hopped back between the two. I had no issues, even using like their AI tools to like select an object within the frame. All of that worked really well, really snappy no issues there. I did that for about 30 minutes and battery wise, we went from 89% to about 77%. Then I edited some 4K i footage from my Sony a7S III in a 4K 24 frames per second timeline in Premiere um, and added a bunch of uh, color correction effects, added a bunch of text, images, music, and surprisingly, it played back just fine, even when I started jumping around the footage, even when I left it at full resolution, which honestly, like, I don't know what kind of voodoo uh, Intel's doing there, but definitely surprised. And as far as battery is concerned, I did that for about 30 minutes and we went from that 77% down to 60%. And to also clarify, that was at 50% brightness, unplugged and at better battery mode. Now, something else kind of interesting about this laptop though, is the fact that it does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which 
as far as I can tell, are just rebranded Thunderbolt 3 ports to have a new number in order to seem equal to the new USB 4 spec that's coming out. There's a few other minor differences, but they don't seem to affect the speed. Maybe I'll do a decoder episode on that later on. You guys let me know if you wanna see that. But regardless of the name, Thunderbolt 4 or 3 allows you to use faster media storage, but even more importantly, maybe for this computer in particular, lets you use an eGPU housing, like this Razer Core X that I just got. Now what that means though is you can take this computer, use a Thunderbolt cable connected to that Thunderbolt port and to this housing, and then put a desktop graphics card in here, and then you would use that desktop GPU as if it was in the computer itself, making your graphics performance a lot better. Okay, uh, let's go over a few really quick things before we kind of wrap this up. First off, it is a Intel Evo certified product, which means that Razer actually sent it to Intel. Intel did a bunch of tests on it and confirmed that it met certain criteria to get the Evo branding. Now, the criteria is like extra long battery life. I think it has to last like 11 hours or longer. It has to have instant on, which it does. When you open the lid, it kind of jumps right into the Windows Hello, which it also has, which is nice. Um, facial recognition and you're right onto the desktop, which is great. It has to have modern standby, they call it, which just means that the Wi-Fi is still active for certain applications only on the device when it's actually closed. So for example, the Mail app will continue to sync. So this way, when you open the laptop, you're not just you know bombarded with all of your emails coming in at once. They kind of have just shown up like they would say on a phone. Qualcomm's like ACPC lineup does this as well. And finally, it has to be able to do fast charging which is kind of cool. I can confirm that this does actually also have that. They claim four hours and 30 minutes. I'd say it's probably a little bit less than that. Now, as far as like battery life overall is concerned, I mean, you can take the different tasks that I was doing um, for the amount of time and then extrapolate that out to figure out like how long it would last doing each of those tasks. Again, just keep in mind, this is a pre-production unit. So like take that with a grain of salt. But for me using this device, I was probably getting about 10 hours on this 4K model, which is pretty good um, considering the battery in here is not terribly large. When I lit our battery report, it looks like it's like 56 watt hours, something around there. So not bad. And then of course, using like photo editing or video editing, especially um, once that GPU kicks on, just like with every laptop, you start to see significantly less battery life. But there you go, guys. Uh, I know this was a information heavy real world test. I was one of a few people to actually get a pre-production unit, so I kind of wanted to give as much information as I could. Um, so I just hope you guys enjoyed that. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below about the laptop, about this format. I have a lot more real world tests coming soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to subscribe so you get notified when those go live. As always though, regardless guys, thanks for watching.